One last thing that I would check, just to make sure that you're familiar with it, um, because it's important to be familiar with it at least, is your playback engine, which is under setup. I'm using HDX. Uh, you have a lot of stuff you can choose from, uh, depending on what your system has. But the thing you really want to pay attention to is your buffer size. This is especially important for recording. If you're recording yourself playing guitar or singing or drums or anything, you want to make sure that you're set at a low sample buffer because the higher the sample you go to, the more latency it adds. And I didn't know this at first. I was totally clueless to it. And I'd be recording guitar and hearing latency, and it would just be horrible. It'd be infuriating, and I thought Pro Tools was just a horrible program, and I almost threw it away, because I was like, this is garbage. It's so late, and I can't even record on this, And but I knew it was the industry standard. I was like, what's going on? What am I doing wrong? And I found out very soon that uh, my samples were set up high. I don't remember what it was, but it was something up high where the latency was just awful. So make sure that if you're hearing latency, that you have your samples set low. They say don't use 64, I've heard. I never use it because you can't. I don't really notice the difference between 64 and 128. 128's a good working range for recording. But this is recording, mind you. I, I'm just mentioning this so that you can be familiar with it because uh, this is mo mainly for recording. When you're mixing, if your system starts crashing because it doesn't have enough resources, then you want to come in here and move it up. And then the latency doesn't matter, right? Because you're not recording. So you don't need it to be in real time. So if it's 30 milliseconds or 1,000 samples or however long that is, um, behind, then it doesn't matter because you're hearing it all the same anyway. And then you're able to sp spend more resources on actually mixing and plugins and stuff. So this is a very important dialog box to uh, to understand. Um, and and yeah, I, if you have a, a cache size, this is basically assigning RAM to my audio files. So I have three gigs assigned to my audio files so that it caches it in my RAM, all my audio. So with Pro Tools 11, I think with Pro Tools 10 you could do it too, where you can cache your audio files to the RAM. So even if you're working with a flash drive that's plugged into your USB port, you can still mix with that drive because everything is loaded onto the RAM. So that's what this is. Um, but uh, yeah, really mess with that buffer size if you're dealing with crashing or if you're dealing with latency because that's most likely where it's coming from. So that is pretty much setting up the session. Now we're ready to import. Real quickly, if you don't see this beautiful stuff up here, go to this little drop down menu and click all, and then it'll show you most of this, and then click expanded transport. Um, that just shows you everything. I usually like to work with everything up here, and I just feel better about myself when I am doing that, <laughs> just so I can see everything. Um, other than that, a little bit of housekeeping real quickly would be to go to operations and your auto backups. Make sure those are something comfortable for you. I have it set to 199 every two minutes. A lot of people have it set to five minutes, whatever you want. It's it's totally up to you. This is your system. Editing, I like my fade in to be like this, which is uh, equal gain and whatever this guy's called, the sort of slope. Same with my fade out. And then in mixing, here we go. Here's what I was really looking for, default EQ. I default to the Fab Filter Pro Q, um, but you may not have it, so you may wanna just go to your EQ one or seven, whatever you want. Um, for dynamics, I absolutely love the Dynamic Spectrum Map, Mapper V2. I use that pretty much exclusively for, for multi-band compression, and other than that, I think we're looking pretty good with the defaults as far as the uh, session setup. So the session is set up and we are ready to import our tracks. So let's do that.